Hello friends, this video on bi applications of biotechnology part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly have a look at the questions. Question number one. Crystals of Bt toxin produced by some bacteria do not kill the bacteria themselves because, you know, I hope you guys remember. So now inside the bacteria, it is present in an inactive form. Only when it is ingested by an insect, it gets activated due to the alkaline medium of the gut of the insect. So these are the four options available to you. Bacteria are resistant to toxin. No, not really. Toxin is immature not exactly immature toxin is inactive yes the toxin is inactive and it, this inactive form of toxin is known as protoxin and this protoxin gets converted into toxin once it is ingested by the insect so this is the right option question number two what are cryoproteins? Name an organism that produced it. How has man exploited this protein to his benefit? So it is also a question related to the similar topic. So cryoproteins are nothing but the, those proteins which help in creating or which help in the synthesis of the Bt toxin. So these are toxic insecticidal proteins. So they are harmful, that is poisonous and they can kill insects. So these are this type of proteins. They, one such organism which produces it is Bt, that is Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. The man has exploited this to develop insect resistant transgenic crops. So that's what you saw, right? So if you take this gene and put it inside a plant, what happens is that plant also gets an inbuilt insecticide and that is how it becomes resistant to insects. So how it works is, now, there are many crops which have been developed in this way, like the cotton, potato, tomato. So, this Bt toxin is present as inactive protoxins in bacteria. So, they are not toxic as long as they are present in bacteria and that's why they do not kill the bacteria. But once they are ingested by insects, they turn into active toxins. And what do they do? Once they are active toxin, they bind to the uh, digestive tract and they also break down the digestive tract. So the gut wall breaks down and the insect dies. So this is how it can kill the insects. Question number three. Diagrammatically represent the experimental steps in cloning and expressing a human gene say the gene for growth hormone into a bacterium like E. coli. So let us see how do we do this. So first of all we need a bacteria like as you saw here we want to express a human gene so we need to take the gene of interest so which is our gene of interest the human gene which is maybe the gene for growth hormone that is the gene of our interest but we need to create the recombinant dna so for that we need the plasmid dna so first we'll take a bacterial cell from there we will take the plasmid dna so this is the plasmid dna and this one is that this piece of dna which you see here this is our gene of interest so this part of dna contains the this is this has been extracted from the human gene which is maybe the gene for growth hormone now what happens is both of these combine together to form the recombinant DNA. So this is the recombinant DNA. Now how they combine with the help of the enzyme ligase which acts as a glue in combining these two, in linking these two. Now what do we do? This recombinant DNA is formed for now. Now this recombinant DNA will be inserted inside the target bacteria. For example, if E. coli is the target bacteria, so we will insert this gene inside E. coli. Now what will happen? Now as E. coli will multiply, so more and more copies of the same gene will get produced. Now as a result, we are actually having our gene of interest in all these bacteria. So if this gene of interest is for growth hormone, so a lot of growth hormone will be produced here. If this gene of interest is for human insulin, so a lot of human insulin will be produced here. So this is how cloning and expression of human gene takes place. 
Question number four. Does our blood have proteases and nucleases? What are proteases? Those enzymes which help in uh, degrading proteins or which helps in breakdown of proteins. Similarly, nucleases are those enzymes which help in breakdown of nucleic acids. Now, human blood does not have proteases and nucleases and we cannot have proteases also because our blood contains a lot of proteins. So, we do not want protease to be present in our blood so that all the proteins are being decomposed. So, we do not want the proteins to be decomposed. Instead, we have certain factors in our blood which helps protease not to be there in the blood so that the proteins which are present in blood, they are not broken down or they are not decomposed. So, blood proteins need to be protected from the action of proteases. So, we do not have these enzymes in our blood. Question number five. What are transgenic bacteria? Illustrate using one example. So transgenic means anything which is genetically modified is transgenic. So bacteria which contain foreign gene that is intentionally introduced into it. So that is what we do in genetic engineering. We intentionally inject a gene of our choice into the organism. So when we insert that gene into a bacteria, then the bacteria is said to be genetically modified or transgenic bacteria. So example of transgenic bacteria is E. coli. E. coli is a very common example of transgenic bacteria. So if you look at, if you talk about E. coli with respect to a genetically engineered human insulin, you see that in E. coli there is a plasmid. So in that plasmid there are two DNA sequences corresponding to A peptide chain and B peptide chain. Now what do we do? Now, the gene which is corresponding to the A peptide chain and B peptide chain of insulin, they are inserted into this bacteria. And as a result, this bacteria is able to produce in human insulin. So, if you see here, this is how insulin looks like. So, human insulin has an A chain and a B chain. So, these are peptide chains, polypeptide chains. And this is the C chain. Now, initially, this is produced in the form of pro-insulin and this pro-insulin gets processed to form insulin. Now, during the course of this processing, the C chain gets separated from the A and B chain. So, otherwise it was like this. So, the C chain gets separated and A and B remains and this is the structure of insulin. So, this insulin is produced because the human gene which is responsible for the production of human insulin, that gene is inserted into E. coli bacteria. So once that gene is inside the bacteria, what happens is as E. coli multiplies, so all the E. coli which are formed, they all have that particular gene. So when they have that gene, then insulin gets produced. So once these genes are inserted into the bacteria, then the bacteria becomes transgenic. So we say that E. coli is a transgenic bacteria. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on applications of biotechnology uh, would have helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.